The sun seems to set continuously as the comedic DJs climb out of the valley in the radio van heading into the house district. The surroundings appear bleaker as the industrial grunge engulfs the night air. I'm still not sure this is a good idea. Of course it's not a good idea. It's a great ruddy idea. What better way to promote EEICCSCGB day and stick it to Cornell Clifton? And that Pratt Stan the S man. Yeah, him too. What's the story behind all that? You know, I am not really sure, it was a long time ago. I think he's just a dick. Larry Rudd turns onto the main street of the house district. The slaughterhouse bubbles on the corner, next door the chuckle house is lit up in full esteem through the foggy mist. As they look for a place to park, women on the corner of the whorehouse across the street yell, Hi Larry Rudd. Are you sure this material is going to wow this, Clifton crowd? Larry Rudd is universal, there's no crowd the Rudd and Bear can't crack up. Jump cut. Brad the Bear and Larry Rudd stand before the registration table in the chuckle house. Sorry guys, the boss told me you can't enter the contest. This is an outrage. Larry Rudd is a professional entertainer. And we are the funniest act in the valley. Ha ha, ha. Quite right Mr. Rudd and Brad the Bear. Was it? You are professional entertainers. Which is why you are not eligible to enter our humble contest. Stan the question man Spalding emerges from behind a menacing curtain. Oh, it must really pain you to say that. Well at least this trip up to nowhere really worked out after all. Don't flatter yourself, I once had to kick a monkey out, turns out he moonlighted for the circus. Well of course that was before the clown massacre, but you guys wouldn't know anything about that would you? The DJs shrug but before they can respond, a man in a full white suit with a cane and matching toupee made entirely out of cow hooves emerges from a much greater menacing curtain. Ha ha, ha ha. Welcome to my club gentlemen. You must be them fellas from ERTS, my condolences on your loss. I am of course Colonel James Clifton. It is a pleasure to finally meet you both. What seems to be the problem out here Stan, it is time to get the show started. Of course sir, no problem here. Sir. Just waiting for these hustlers to move along, sir. Absurd, it is a real honor to have these two fine gentlemen entertain our patrons. See them to our finest dressing room and whatever they want to eat or drink is on the house. Knock them did you fine fellows. Of course sir, if you think that is a good idea. Brad the bear can no longer hold it in. Yes, sir, anything you say sir, can I kiss your butt for real if I'm good sir? Ha ha. 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 Journalists know nothing of comedy. Am I right? Am I? Right. You boys will do just as planned. Ha. 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 I mean you will do great. Ha. 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 Um, yes, well thank you for your hospitality Colonel. Larry Rudd really appreciates it. Oh? I thought you were, Larry Rudd. At your ruddy service sir. Ha. 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 This couldn't be coming together any better. Ha, ha ha, ha ha. Wait a minute now. You tried to poison us. And poisoned our friend May, you put her in the hospital. Now we are here to put you in the morgue, you bastard. Oh, that's right. Tainted meat, not ruddy cool man. Gentlemen, I assure you, I did no such thing. All of my meat passes stringent tests. Sure. You sent meat daddy. I mean Jethro and his boy to bring us rotten meat. Good heavens. Well I must say Jethro is a special boy, he is a giver rather than a thinker. Just look at his wife, now, nothing against my daughter, but she is a manly woman. I assure you no ill will. Eat, drink, be funny. I must go now gentlemen, good day. Ha ha, ha ha, ha. Colonel Clifton exits stage left in ecstatic jubilation, twirling his hoof cane in joy. Eccentric fellow, Larry Rudd admires that. Of course, the colonel is a true showman in his own right. But the show must begin, follow me to a dressing room gentlemen. Your finest dressing room, I believe is what you were told. And we are going to need to see all the menus, drinks. Breakfast. Lunch. Happy hour? Nah. Nah, dinner. Well of course my good Rudd. And, dessert. Of course. Dessert. Bring that one first, would you please? I'm not bringing you idiots, shit. I am a judge, remember. 
You clowns shouldn't even be here. You are politically incorrect, immature buffoons. So you have heard of us. That's ruddy great. Never. Though I presume Brad the Bear's comedy style has yet to mature since Broadcast University. Broadcast University. We took some classes at the community college you pretentious twat. Now I remember, you were always too stuck up to broadcast, anything funny. Funny? You think always making fart noises, while I am trying to give top bulletin news, is funny? Or, you did, fart, breaking, news, with, him? It was before I met you, and we are the team that made it a drive time AM radio Grammy nominated bit. Rock on, fart breaking news. FBN always rocks on. Well, here, you are. Stan shows them into their dressing room, it is a decent room, nothing extraordinary, yet comfortable. Break a leg idiots. Then I can take you next door and make a sandwich out of you. Ha ha, ha, ha who says I am not funny now. Stan slams the door behind him chuckling his way down the hall. His screws are too loose and too tight at the same time. Yeah, well it's not about him, it's about the ruddy crowd and we are going to leave them in stitches. Right on. Well what are we doing standing around here? Let's check out the competition. And the ruddy grub. Oh, yeah. Eat on. Eat on. Suddenly in the kitchen, the chef looks up, smiles, filled with rockdacious vibes. The pair of DJs leave their dressing room and wander the halls, freaks and charlatans rotate the hall and stage. A teenage boy wearing a bow tie tinkers with a robot in the corner. We? Come on Rockter, we are up next. How did you go and get yourself a bad connection now? Hey little Ruddy, cool toy. Can old Larry Rudd give it a go? No. Wait, sorry. What? This is my partner, Rockta the comedy bot. He's no toy. He's a state-of-the-art animatronic, comedic android. Well at least he is, when the wires are connecting. Fascinating. I'm Larry Rudd and this is my partner Brad the Bear. Pleasure to meet you, Rawther, part of their old top. No. Be careful. Larry Rudd grasps the robotic hand and gives it a hearty shake. Suddenly sparks fly from Rawther as all systems boot up. Anyone here from out of town? No? Figures who would come from out of town to a dump like this? Am I right? You're a wonderful audience. Wow, thanks mister you did it. I'm Wayne, well we are up. Good luck tonight guys. No sweat kid, good luck to you too, break a lug nut out there. Wayne pushes Rawther out on stage and the crowd goes wild. Intrigued by the metallic marvel the pair of DJs watch from the wing. Y'all been watching these Olympic Games? I tell you anyone who doesn't believe propaganda works has never watched the Olympics. The amount of work involved to make people care about adults in a swimming pool, come on. I have never gone to a bar and said hey, barkeep, would you put on some synchronized diving, my good man. Track and field. The one sport even I could play in school. I was so fast running from bullies, they were always trying to copy my memory card. No audience, how's that different from any other Olympics? It's like that friend who invited you to his ping pong match five times, and you had five great excuses, then right as you think the jig's up they tell you you can't come. Darn it. You know who I heard is watching? Lance Armstrong, he called me up and said hey, rot her the comedy bot, old friend. You see these Olympics, why didn't I think of that? I could have just changed my name to Lance Armstrong, Cycling Committee. Hey, Olympic cycling, after a month of seeing men in Tron suits, travel all across France, now you can watch them in a gym, yes that's right an entire gym. But this isn't just any roller rink, oh wait, basically. But no roller hockey allowed, we have real sports being played. They have all these new sports this year, have you seen this, rock climbing? Rope climbing is out, not cool, but you know what is cool. Climbing a wall.
Wow, he's really funny. Yep, that Rother is a ruddy star. I don't think he wrote his own material. Wayne is the genius and the star. Listen to that crowd they love him. I ruddy agree with you there pal. Wayne is the genius, but the crowd is not. They love what they see and that's Rother. They added surfing and skateboarding too, that's pretty great. Now that feeling typically reserved for Sundays, when I want to zone out and stuff myself with Surge and Cheetos dreading the coming week, while one of these bargain bin fillers drowns it all out. Can be replicated for a few long weeks, like an intravenous drip of cowabunga. Is that a banned substance? I'm not sure, better ask Putin. Larry Rudd gazes, eyes glazed over, staring at the crowd, Rawther, and Wayne. A momentary profound sadness from his usual demeanor is noticed by Brad the Bear as he sees his friend incompletely revealed to him through the shadows. Well, that's deep. You all right? Larry Rudd shakes about out of his daze. Of course I'm all right, we have a show to do. Just wouldn't want to be the suckers, going after these guys. Larry Rudd and Brad the Bear, you gentlemen are next. The pair look stunned. Larry Rudd's silence troubles Brad the Bear. Rudro. Buddy. A confident smile emerges on Larry Rudd's face. Rudro. So much controversy. Jinping called me up, said Ruffering Ole Hahabat, we need you to umpire softball. I said how do you people keep getting my number? He said every time you go to the cloud and take a shit you airdrop it to everyone. <laughs> ah yeah, you have been a wonderful audience, don't forget to grease your waitress, one hand greases the other. Just the other night in fact she greased me up for what I thought was the pole vault turned out to be the hammer throw. <laughs> I'm rougher the comedy bot, back me up before formatting. Wayne comes to the stage to grab Rawther and bow, but to no applause, the crowd has gotten up to get drinks and use the washrooms. Larry Rudd and Brad the Bear clap and cheer from stage left. Though others look at him merely as the clean-up crew. Wayne is thankful for the pair's support, waves and exits stage right. As the Ertz duo stake claim to the stage. Next to the Chuckle House stage, welcome Larry Rudd and Brad the Bear from the Valley ERTS Radio. Brad squints and makes out that the MC for the evening is none other than Meet Daddy Jethro. Alarmed at first, then filled with relief knowing he's a fan of the pair, he begins the skit. You know what I can't stand, all the damn commercials these days. Boo. Advertising puts food on the table for my kids. You guys suck. The hecklers begin right away on the pair. I know just what you mean bear, seems like they are everywhere now. But no one has what old Larry Rudd has. Oh yeah, and what is that? Something new, and exciting. Oh no, my good friend, something old but reimagined. Wow. Really? Well tell me more. You have heard of waterproof bags, dry bags, rud sacks? Of course, of course. Well what about wet sacks? Sounds intriguing. Oh you have seen wet sacks before my good man. They used to be for washing raggedy old stuffed animals and your grandma's panties. But now you can do so much more with Larry Rudd's wet sacks. Boo. My father-in-law wears panties and my mother-in-law wears boxers. You ignorant assholes. Um, okay, you should probably have them checked for dementia lady. Your wet sack sound useful Larry, tell me more. Phew. Medical conditions are nothing to joke about. My kid has ADHD, is bipolar and obese. You guys are the worst. How can you be ruddy over active and fat? Boo. Get off the stage you Karens. Go fuck yourself, all I'm caring about is Larry Rudd's wet sacks. Or oh, thanks buddy but I think it's time we ruddy get out of here. At the judge's balcony Colonel Clifton turns to Stan Spaulding. Ha ha, ha. Listen to that crowd. Excellent. You did this Stan. You changed what is normal, you changed what they find funny. Your mindless fear and re-education puff pieces. They are almost ready to completely take down these fools. And this whole stinking valley area will hear only what I let them. Will buy only what I tell them. We'll wear whatever I say. Be who I tell them to be. Ha ha, 
Ha ha ha. You are truly a genius, sir. Angry and Breads begin to turn on the duo, throwing bottles and hurling food at the pair. Wayne watches in horror and springs into action, rolling Rawther out to amuse the crowd, getting the pair behind him. The three and a half men make their way off stage. Don't forget to come to EEICCSCGB Day. Boo. Boo. It's free. The crowd mumbles, feigning slight interest upon the free entertainment aspect. Larry, Rod, and Brad the Bear, ladies and gentlemen, fuck them. The disgraced duo regroup with Wayne and Rawther in the dressing room. What is with that crowd? That was awful. It's just the Clifton crowd. They are a bit brainwashed by Clifton News Network, and life at the slaughterhouse makes them, well, tender. Ruddy hell, fuck the Cliftons, whole lot of that meat, media mogul family. Ha ha, ha, yeah. Well Rockler and I think you guys did great, but we should get going. Thanks Wayne, Larry, and I think you guys were great too. Seems like you really know about tech. Do you think you could help us out with EEICCSCGB Day? We could use some help programming the effects for the concerts, game, and a spectacular fireworks finale. Wow. Really fireworks. We thought old Larry Rudd was the pyro guy. No, you gotta help me with management responsibilities. And staying out of Eddie Vedder's line of sight. Good point, good Ruddy point. So what do you say Wayne? Well what do you think Rockther? We need Wayne for this one, sorry Rockther. Wayne smiles. I'm in. Well, fine. Screw you guys, I banged Eddie Vedder's mom, Edna Vending Machine. The trio laugh at Rawther's joke, then a voice echoes from the stage. Thank you all for coming out tonight. It sure was a great night, wasn't it? Well, except for those bigots from Ertz, am I right? Ha ha, ha ha, yes. Well, now the moment you have all been waiting for, tonight's winner. Everyone's favorite valley headman, Colonel James Clifton. And I stand the question man Spaulding have made our decisions and in third place we have, Ethel Harris with her prop comedy. A pig-faced woman, with a large red afro and blotchy skin wax herself in the head with a large mallet and chuckles. In second place we have Rawther the comedy bot with Wayne Clifton. The DJs look shocked at Wayne now realizing, he is in fact a Clifton. And the winner is Ranch O with his prop comedy. A man in a green bodysuit takes the stage and dumps a bucket of ranch dressing over himself while holding the trophy and the crowd goes wild. I can't believe it. Right, how many prop comics can a place have? Is this the ruddy 80s? I don't think that is what he meant. I am sorry if I misled you. I understand if you don't want me for EEICCSCGB day anymore. Let's go Rockler. Hold up kid. He was right, I'm surprised there are so many prop comics under one roof. You are fine, we still need you for the show. Yeah the Rudd's no judge, rock on Wayne. Thanks guys, suddenly I am filled with rockdacious vibes. Rock on. That's the spirit. Rock on. So how exactly are you related to that ruddy old bloke? He your granddad or something? Actually, he's my brother. The pair of DJs are in stunned silence. The age difference between the ancient colonel compared to the adolescent technician before them is astonishing. But how? No ruddy way. Impossible. Long ago my mother was a health and safety inspector visiting the Clifton meat packaging plant. Legend was that before the Clifton family began to inbreed the colonel's father General Clifton was the first to freeze his semen as a genetic reset switch for the future Clifton 2.0. During my mother's inspection of the plant she found said vial of the general semen. Knowing the family's wealth and influence she took it home and inserted it into her vagina with a turkey baster, and after cooking I emerged. The colonel does not approve of my existence or entertainment style. Oh, dang. Um, okay. Blackout.